Hello there, welcome to another week in our garden. Now we're down at the pumpkin frame, or squash frame, whichever you like to call it. And because of the rain last week, the pumpkin and squashes have really set to and put some growth on. So they all need tying in. I'll just show you some of the growth and then I'll get on with tying it in. And then we'll do the circles up to date. As you can see, they put quite a lot of growth on this week. So I need to concentrate on what I'm doing and get them all tied in nicely and then we'll show you how far we've gone. This one here has actually got to the top. It'll need some support now it's up there and then it'll look after itself on the top. All fruiting well, lots of insects on them. So hopefully we should have a, a bit of a crop off them. I'm just going to tie this last one up and then we'll have a look at these pumpkin circles. So we'll just pop this one on, twice round the support and put a knot in it. That'll stop it from slipping then you see. And then it's just a knot or a bow just to hold it on loosely. It will soon attach itself and get it going. There you go. And I just cut the cut the strings off. And there. there you go. One or two still want time, but when it gets a little longer, a couple of days, we'll tie it in. But make sure it goes through and then back again. The other side is done nicely now. We are getting some small fruits on them, but I wouldn't be surprised if they don't drop off as the plant goes. Grows as the plant grows, they will probably drop off. Now, we better have a look at these circles now. At the moment, the, this plant's going in every direction. Let's see what we can sort out. Having a look at the way things are in the pumpkin bed to sort the circles out I think these two plants and make one circle we make one circle with the one over there and another circle with the one over there it's been three circles and you can see now why it was important to put sticks in where the roots are so you know where to water now the canopies are building up we will need to be able to find them right, so I've made quite a few wires ready and we'll follow the circles around so you can see exactly what we're going to do it takes a little bit of sorting out so this one will come round pick up that one and go round in the circle back again so this is one we've already pinned you see so we'll pin it here We'll pin it here and it's picking up that one now and as this grows the pair will run round. This one, this is a new one that's come. So this one now needs to join this run. Very carefully move it across. And we'll pop a pin just, oh we've got a pin, oh, there it is. There's the pin, so we'll take that out and pop them back in. Just gently pin them down because we'll be lifting it again soon when that one comes down. This one, you can see it's on the wrong side of the leaves. The leaves will do a lot of the holding in for you. We'll get it to here and then when it gets a little bit more, that's too tight to pin yet, when it gets a little bit more we'll pin it there. As you can see this one is coming off the same plant and it seems to wants to join the potatoes. We'll bring that round so it's going to pick up this one here. There's a clip just there, look, but that's a little short, so we'll put another clip in there to hold it. Not a lot. What you will find is that with pinning them down, they're probably going to put some roots on the stem as they go round, which also helps. So as you can see, that one now comes right round, and we're going to pick up this one now and then make our way back again. So we'll go over there and bring it round. Now this one, can you see? I'll bring it round. 
This one has decided it's going into next door, so we don't want that. So we'll bring it round and we'll pin it just there, look. That'll be the edge of our, our double circle going round. As we get to here, a good shoot coming off here, look, but not quite long enough yet. So we'll leave that one till it comes and it can join the rest. This one. We don't want it joining that one, we've also got to work out where we're going to walk so I need a little walkway here so I'm taking it to there, let's put it there look, not too tight, let them, let them room to grow. We're keeping them all going round in the same direction to make it easier to keep laying them in. This will be my walkway around the plant for now. Soon there'll be, hopefully, be pumpkins laid there. Now this one, this one's coming off that way and we need it to go that way. There is a clip already there. So I'll remove that clip and just gently take that round in position. So here's this one. This is the loose one, not So what, we'll pull that clip up and just pull it round a little, gently now and just lightly pin it again another shoot here lot coming down nicely so we carefully bring that round and we are going to actually pin this one into into this one here look. just to start it off, okay birds have been pecking the fruits already lot, can you see it? Not a lot I can do about it, I can't protect all this lot, but you can actually see the peck holes in it where they've been pecking it. As you can see now, we've brought these two plants in to make one circle. And it's beginning to work now. As you can see, the foliage gets quite congested as you go round, but if you leave it, it will sort itself out. Right, now we're on... This one right at the bottom, as you can see, it's really getting old now. So what I'm going to do, it, this will definitely be a circle here. So I'll let it go round this old holly and we'll bring it round to join up again. There's another one going over there. So we'll do this one, then we'll bring that one over, okay? I'm just going to gently pull it round put a pin in. That should be fine there I think. If I got another small pin I have, I'll just bring this round and pop it in there just to start it on. It's because they're growing quite fast now, if you let them get too thick and you try to bring them round they'll snap. As you can see this one has really taken out and if you remember what I was telling you about the roots, I don't know if you can see it. Can you see that root there? As they're laid down, they will put the roots out and pin the cells down as well. So we we'll very carefully now put this on with this one going round. This is all due to the heavy rain we've had. So we'll just take that carefully round. We probably have to damage that root. We try not to if we can help it. We try and lay it. There you are. That will bite down now. We'll just take this pin and turn it so we've got the two going together. That's that one now going round nicely and it'll join up there and keep going round and round. This one is next to the rhubarb. As I've been harvesting the rhubarb I've tried to take the, the stalks off this side to give it a bit more room. So we'll bring this, we'll try to bring this one round in a circle just here. Remembering that I need a walkway as well so we don't want to get it too too big I want to keep them quite compact as you can see it's coming round nicely so we'll drop a pin in there and just hold it and hopefully that will root down as it comes 
just here nothing really ready there looks like there was one that's been knocked off look so we've lost that we have to wait for a side shoot that's the pumpkin circle started four more that side to do so seems a lot of work to get the circle set up but once you set up it's a case of just lifting the pin and playing and just putting it back and as I said before once the root down they look after the cells then while we're passing I see there's a cause yet ready now I've only got a pair of scissors with me so I'll take it off with the scissors else tomorrow this will be too big really for what we want so there it is look just break the flower away nice cause yet then I see there's another one just about right for picking so we'll have this one while we're here because tomorrow it will be far too big so we'll take that off it's a, a nice size courgette you can also call them zucchini hello there saturday morning we're running late again this week we're going to prune the stone fruits this is the morello cherry that we harvested and it's ready for pruning now to get these off we have now a nice few days of dry weather so I'm going to get the pruning done on the cherry and on the plum and probably just show you how we do the apple and pear but I'll do those later in the month but the stone fruit need to be done in some good dry weather we're trying to grow it on the back of this shed this is on the north side of the shed so it's very cold around here so you can see these that are sticking straight out are not going to suit the espalier that i want to produce what i'm going to do is take these off but leave a couple of buds so i can get some fruiting spurs on them for next year now remember don't prune too hard on your cherries or she'll get no cherries next year so a nice light pruning obviously the things like this you need to take off to keep the shape so I'll quickly go around and do it I'm literally going to take them off two up so there'll be a fruiting spare developed there and then we'll get the fruit on there next year I should do this on them all if you do it to two you've got one and one as a standby like we did with the grape same again now, although it's sticking out i'm just going to prune it to two just there so that will give me a little fruiting spare on there for next year's fruit once you get your eye and you can move quite quickly pruning these that are going short on this side if you see that there that's That'll be next year's fruit spur there. So we just want to encourage another one there. And it also keeps the branch nicely trained. Don't cut too close to the bud in case there's a little bit of dye back and you could lose the, the bud that you're cutting there. Lovely dry day for it. The wounds will all heal up quickly. And then the silver leaf won't be able to get in. That one there I'm not touching. Those two I'm not touching. But this one I'll just nip back a little bit. Look, we're getting some flies on it. Now I haven't sprayed this at all this year. I've just left it. It's had no soap on it or anything. And with the net we had on it. We had no birds on it. That one not. I could let it go out there I think I will I'll let it go up there working our way back those two are all right to go up there and up there this one's sticking out look we don't really want that one just work your way along that's fine that's fine just take that one off that's fine there so that's good we've got a wire here I'll put those on that wire and then I'll put another, I'll get rid of this jute string that was holding the net up and then put another wire behind the pipe so we can go on again. So let's quickly get it done and show you. Just work your way along. Always remember not too much. Oh, 
I'll just take the end off that one. That's fine. Just this one here. Now that's all I'm going to do to the cherry. If you just see there, we've got a, a bit of a dead leaf. So we'll take that off. There you are. So that's the cherry done. Keep it light and you'll be a good crop next year on it, providing we don't get a late frost again. I, right, I've harvested the peas. Show you where I've harvested them and what I've been up to down there. And then we'll have a look at the pruning on the plum. And we'll have a look at the apple and pear. Right, here we are in the bee and the bean and the pea frame. I've harvested the early peas, as you can see. I've grubbed them out and what I've done because the soil was very very well prepared for these peas I've just turned the top with the hand fork and I've reset the same peas again so plenty of time to get another crop out of this ground so we'll take them these are what we've harvested out of the center crop very nice lovely peas a few courgettes, we're always lifting courgettes. Lift them as you see them, and then they'll not get too big. The lettuce is now being harvested. We'll get through those rather quick now, especially the little gem. These are the main crop peas coming along nicely now. I think next year we'll go for a little bit better variety because these are supposed to get to six feet, but they've only made three feet this year. Last year it struggled as well to get to the top so I think next year we'll have a different variety see if we can get get to the six feet high that we require. Now while we're down the bottom here we'll just have a look at the uh, plum tree and show you how I'm going to prune that. Right we're at the plum tree as you can see it's been beaten up well by aphid this year and I did come down early last week with my knapsack charged up with soap all ready to spray all the trees when I got to here I could see ladybirds and little baby ladybirds if you like the larvae hoverflies all doing the business of catching the aphid so I couldn't spray I couldn't get myself to spray so I went and emptied the soapy water at the top I'll just prune some of the outside and now I'm not going to take an awful lot off, I'm just going to take these that you can see that are growing too far out. I'll get on and give you an idea, but it's a beautiful day for it, it's lovely and dry. We'll go about halfway back and just take these, these long ones off. Just take it halfway back, not too much, because we need those fruiting spurs again for next year. We would have been absolutely covered in plums this year, but the late frost just totally wiped them out. If you see any branches that are crossing, obviously take those out, like you do on the apple tree. But I'll just go round and then I'll get the long handle and take the top off just to show you that. Right, the long handle prune is a very useful tool if you have one. Just take those off. I don't want plums that high, so I'll never be able to harvest them. So keep the tree nice and compact. We're picking these up for days now. As soon as you get a bit of wind, I'll come back and pick them all up. That one I'm going to take off, look. And that one. It's growing rather well. It always grows well, but it don't seem to fruit very well because of the frost. We'll take that one off just there and that one just there it's very difficult with the long handled ones but just try and get above the above the leaf joints if you can not like that one I missed that one that's better it's now beginning to take shape and that's the way I do stone fruit just prune lightly around the edge any cross branches or diseased branches that you see cut out leave them for, so that all the cuts can now dry in this lovely hot weather and then when it does rain because the silver leaf virus will be in the rain it's in the atmosphere hopefully 
they'll all be healed up and they won't pick the virus up. The virus actually has to get into the room. As you can see, the pear tree is getting far too high now. It's put on a lot of runners at the top. I should take all those off with these long handled pruners. I'll just do two or three just to show you. Again, not just. This is another tree that we had absolutely laden with flowers and little buds on it to make the pears and the frost took the lot off. Very disappointed this year with the late frost. Now I have a plum next to it, I have to do exactly the same as what we did to that plum there. Just take them off. I don't want fruit that far up. Now we'll go around the whole of the tree like that until it's a nice shape. Have a look inside, there's a little bit of dead branches inside I need to cut out and any cross branches. I do believe I've seen one pair on there it is. Because of the damage from that very late frost, I think we've only got one or two pairs like that on it, on the whole of the tree. You can do the apples the same way, but I tend to leave the apples towards the end of the month, rather than now because the, the fruit is still developing. We don't be knocking the tree about too much. The pears will all be done like that for next time you see them, they'll all be trimmed back. We have these fruit trees that we grow and we prune and we look after every year. And it's so disappointing when we have these late frosts, just as the flowers are beginning to set or the fruit's beginning to set and it wipes them out. But you never know, one year we might have a bumper crop off them. So now we're going to pop up, I've just got a couple of rows of main crop carrots to pop in, in the frame. So we'll do that. I've just thinned a few of the early carrots out, just to give the others a bit more chance to grow. And they're coming on well, they're very usable, a couple are usable, but even the smaller ones will use those as we thin them. So we'll take those up to the house with us. I've been putting the main crop carrots in this frame. I haven't gone too early because I know they will be up above this frame before they start slowing down. So I've gone late and they're really, they're up in a few days as you can see they're growing already. I've just got two rows to put in at this end now. These are Autumn King too. They're the best carrots for the winter, these are. As you can see, I've planted these about a week ago. They're all up. They'll all make good carrots, there's quite a few. But I've got two more rows just to pop in this end, so I'll do those now. I'm putting them in very thin, or as thin as I can. Let them grow and take them as they come ready in the winter. Okay. It's very wet underneath because I watered it last night, so they'll be fine at that. That's the autumn or winter carrots now set. We'll keep the lids down, keep them watered. and say we've gone late as we dare so the carrots don't get too much top. I just thought we'd mention as we come past the brassica bed, with a, a lot to harvest. Next week we'll do the main harvest on the brassicas. We've got a lot of broccoli in there and a lot of beautiful cabbages, but we need them to get them out now to give the others room. Right, we're now up at the shed under the grapevine. I don't know if Diane could just show you the grapes are everywhere this year. I think we're going to have a bumper crop of grapes. I think we're going to be treading the grapes this year to make the wine. It's early season yet, a lot can happen. Thanks. I've been doing some summer cuttings. It's a hobby of mine and I do like doing it. So I thought I'd just show you how I, how I do a few. Just one of each left in the tray. I popped them in some water just to hold them because we're filming. So I have cut a little bit of the foliage off. So let's get on with it then. I always root a rose in water every year but last year wasn't very successful so I'm having another go this year 
but you literally just take the take a stem of rose and you put it in some water and within a few weeks it should root well we'll go through the cuttings I'll tell you what they are as we do them and pop them in Orchiba spotted laurel do be careful with the knife I have cut my finger with it so take care with yours right, and then we just cut the bottom below, below a node like so into the rooting powder which is organic powder that's Portuguese laurel I'll just show you a conifer this is a juniper cutting slightly different from Chamacy Paris etc what we do is when you trimmed all the sides off it's best if you can just do a little slither of bark off before you put the rooting powder on the ground cover golden conifer that one very nice potentilla again cut under a node this has got a floppy top look so we take that off as well we don't want the top it'll only flop over compost is just normal peat free but it's got a lot of horticultural sand in it about a third sand and some grit just to open it up choicea tenata sun sun golds or sun dance we'll just take the leaves off look there far too much foliage up there for it for the, to the root we'll just chop that one in half look okay just blow the node cut and then into the powder choice tenata sun dance i have labeled them already so this is emerald and gold that's gaiety there's two varieties again just take that leaf off you see and then blow a node and cut same again and in it pops always make sure that they're not a hung cutting that there's compost on the bottom of the cutting okay. ajuta bridal wreath it's called has white flowers in the spring I've already took the top off because the top is floppy so we could keep it in there so I just need to cut the bottom and then rooting powder there you go I always like to do it with my fingers there you can root hollies this time of year they root quite well don't cut the leaves that is a damage when I picked it but the, we don't cut the leaves of the hollies but we must cut below a node like that and then same again into the row of the hollies I try to we've got quite a few of these in the garden so I always try and get a mix of male and female if we can lavender old favorite what we do with the lavender we take these off like that and like that and there's a node there we'll take that off there we've taken the top out and then always root while well lavenders this is hydrangea pink hydrangea this time just get the water off it's dropped into the water you can see the two main leaves there we'll take those off that one and that one we'll half that one because it's quite big and we'll just cut I think below this main node at the bottom not rather than that small one okay then we go with the powder in it goes just nice and tight but not too tight this is rosemary always a favorite of mine I love rosemary I love the smell so we do the same again we'll take those off it's just a case of reducing the cutting and then cutting below a node there you are a little bit of powder in it goes two more quick ones Escalonia this is the red one as you can see that I've cut the leaves because it had to go in there but we'll cut again I think we'll take that one off anyway and then we'll cut below this node here yeah I think we might just take those top ones in half as well the less leaf it's got the quicker it will root and get growing if you've got too much leaf they'll just die back 
They are curling, they were curling on the bush. I think that was because it was a hot day and I was cutting them. And last but not least, Euonymus, this is the green and white version, it's called Gaiety. So we'll do that one just under that node there. No need to cut these leaves, they're quite leathery so they won't give off much of their water now. Water it well and what I do when I come down or when I'm passing I keep the bottle of water the same temperature as that and then as I come past I just give it a spray over if it looks a bit dry. 60 young plants over there, we'll put the lids on. That's a dirty one. What I like to do is give them a spray inside as well as you put them on. And then we'll let them root on this table. The only thing I will do though is to, we'll just pop a, a double fleece on just to stop the sun from blaring at them if you like. And keep them a little bit shaded. And in a few weeks they'll be rooted nicely. Right, while we're down at the shed, I've been asked to tell you what I feed my seed and seedlings. When you're putting the seed into seed compost, there is very, very little or no nutrient in that compost that you either buy or make yourself. You don't need it. All you need that compost for is to germinate the seed. Then when the seed is growing, the plant is growing from the seed, you can put them in trays, into pots, like these. The compost we use for potting on has got more nutrients in it, so it feeds the plant. Now when the plant gets well, well rooted, it's using up all those nutrients that's in that compost. Now compost you buy has usually got six to eight weeks feed in it. So in, if you're using a potting compost for this, in six to eight weeks it will be running out. I would think more or less four weeks. I hope that helps. We'll go through it. Seed and cutting compost has little or no nutrients in it. Potting compost, I would say you've got four weeks, maybe five weeks nutrients already in the compost but after that you need to be feeding these plants when you come to feeding them the liquid feeds etc make sure you get the liquid feed suitable for the plant obviously it's ericaceous you want ericaceous feed and then the general purpose feed for normal plants right we're in the greenhouse to finish this week as you can see we'll be harvesting tomatoes and cucumbers this week and I'm also eye safe now. Thank you for those people being concerned. There they go. We're all protected now. The peppers are doing rather well as well. Coming along nicely. I won't be harvesting them just yet. At least I won't damage myself when I am picking this week. So many thanks to those people who are concerned. Saturday today running a little bit late again this week thank you for all those people who subscribed sorry it was a little bit rushed this week especially towards the end but i hope you've enjoyed it and we'll see you next week bye now